topic for tonight is Will man rob God? In brackets, mankind part 10. Matthew 22, verse 37. 22, verse 37, everybody there? Yes. Almost? Okay. Ready, in this King James Version, ready, read, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thine God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thine mind. One more time, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thine God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thine mind. Amen. So we're in part 10 now. <coughs> this is the final part. I think it is. I think it is. <laughs> All right. I want you to write this down. If you keep comparing small and small, if you keep comparing small with small, You can only achieve small you can only achieve small comma receive achieve small comma receive small comma be small comma see small comma Live small and think small. If you compare small with small, you can only achieve small, <coughs> receive small, be small, say small, live small, think small. Small is small. <laughs> small is small. Our Creator created everything. He created the heavens, created the earth, and all therein. So from there we know that our God is a big God. Big God! That's right. Picture the world. See the world as one location. Picture the world. See the world as one location. Now, anywhere you put yourself, just about anywhere you put yourself in the world, you can buy something like phone, what you call it, FaceTime, Skype. You can reach somebody from the same Caribbean, you can reach somebody in Europe, Asia, North America, South America, in the other part of the Caribbean, you can read some more. In Mono Second. You take a plane ride or jet ride, you can get to just what any man you would in a of hours. So, see the world as one location. You see the world as one location. Now, see your business, see your career. 
your ministry as the world. See them as the same times. See them as the same times. Because a lot of us tend to small. We tend to small. If we see our career, our business, our ministry, as the same size as you see the world, you could imagine what we could do for God in our businesses, in our careers, in our ministries. But then we take small. Small is small. Say that. Very busy. Satan knows that if we bring a thought or an idea to us, a lot of us lacking great wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, especially about the kingdom of darkness and about the kingdom of Satan, a lot of us feel that these are our thoughts, these are our ideas. So Satan keeps our mind filled with small things. He tries to stress us out. About these same little small things. He keeps us very busy. Very busy. His plan is to keep us from the knowledge of who we really are. So he tried to keep us in the dark of who we really are. Everything. Everything. He us. He created galaxies. He created the world. He created the sun. He created the moon. He created the heavens. Everything God has created. Everything belongs to God. If Satan did not, if Satan could keep us from the knowledge and the understanding of who we are, then our minds are not focused on what we should be focused on. We're not doing what we've been commanded to do. They say you keep us so busy that we take it too small. Our careers, our businesses, our ministries, should be far more than what we're thinking in right now. Some of us have some goals and business plans right now. So does this business plan go and improve the size of the world? And in comparison, when you, when you think about the size of the world to a, a galaxy, the world is very small. Very, very small. So small is small. So what are we thinking about? We are so busy with the small things that we're missing the big picture. So busy that we don't have time to think about God throughout the day. If we miss the picture, if we miss the mark, then our minds and our thoughts will never be small. We will never fulfill our destiny that God has called us and created us to be on this earth and to be with Him. Because our God is big God. We see the scale that God operates on. He operates on big, large, enormous, huge, great. Our minds. If it's not lined up according to God's mindset, then we're thinking too small. And when we think small, it causes us when we think about mostly ourselves. Mostly ourselves when our mind and thinking is too small. So we keep us busy in ways of always thinking about ourselves, our situations, our home lives, something ain't going right. Our business, family, car problem, house problem, no house problem, um, fact that you ain't got no house, 
car, problem, car, breaking down, need a new car, don't have a car, want a car. It's all kind of things that say to keep us busy there. Wow. It's small things that need to fill our mind with. And these, we think, is our thoughts. But they're not our thoughts. They're not our thoughts. If God saying, not the plans that I have for you, plans to give you a future and hope, not for disaster. Then God have great for us. So we have to. Now, for God, why are you taking so small? Why is it all these ones a house, three children, and dog, and a gap, and a nice home? That's what the average person wants. Average. We want a nice career, we want to be able to make money, live comfortable, have a nice little nest egg, um, put up something for retirement, when the children become grown up, um, um, college tuition put aside. We want to be comfortable. That's small. You tell why it's small, because we're already getting to us. So say that now, bring the thought that we have to pursue these things. How does he bring these thoughts? Say, no man, these are my thoughts. Oh, they ain't your thoughts. They say thoughts. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. You mark, look, and don't look in. <laughs> you get so used to these the electronic devices that when you pull it up, all the books come, so you just gotta scroll down. You forget where they was. When you had to use your brain, you have to actually go through the books of the Bible right around. Just to try to figure out where it is. Alright, so we're going to Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Everybody there? Actually, let's read from 4 so we get an understanding of, of, of the, the whole subject, okay? So we're going to read from verse 1 down to verse 3. Ready? Read. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now let's read three one more time. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Alright, now go down to 6. Let's read 6, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, And all this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whom I will give it. Amen. So there we, there we read, And the devil said unto him, Unto him is Jesus. This is when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. Ah, uh, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent him on that earth. Uh, ah, the Holy Spirit took him into the living space. He fasted for four days. And it says, after the fast, he was tempted in heaven. And it said, Satan said to Jesus. Now, we know Satan is not flesh. What is Satan? He's spirit. So now, if Satan is a spirit, how is that that Satan said to Jesus? I want you to say this, but I want you to say this in your mind. Small is small. No, 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 in your mind. Don't say it out loud. Say, say small is small. One more time. Small is small. Okay, who voice did you hear? Yo, no words. Right wrong. Yeah. Did you hear our whole No. No. So you heard your own voice saying small is small. Yeah? Say this speak to you the same way. That's how we spoke to Jesus. Right in here. Right in here. So when you hear, oh, I mean why you're slapping down and you come talking to me like that. Where do you think that come from? 
not from your mind, but DT is spirit. That's now when spirit will get you take off to go get you on fire. Understand? That's not you. Say, I should have sat in that. <laughs> then talk to me like that. I should just own you like that. <laughs> no. That's the spirit. So when Satan said to Jesus, he said, and the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God. Jesus knows the Son of God. So you think Jesus said this? No. He said that to Jesus in Jesus' mind. Because he's a spirit. So what is he talking to? He is speaking to Jesus' spirit. So when these devils come up to us, with these negative thoughts, these nasty thoughts, these wicked thoughts, and thoughts that get you angry, it's a spirit speaking to your spirit. So, when Satan tell you, Man, you better, you can't go to church tonight because you got to finish um, your report because you get five more if you stay and finish your report. You think nothing. Why are you keeping you in church? So you have to know when Satan is speaking to you. When our minds are filled with small things, with the cares of this world, Satan speak to us even louder. Louder. Don't let what they be you. And this is a toy modulate. <laughs> your heart will stop for the Lord. And then every time the phone rings, you pitch your head. Because you know now, this person come and call them for collection. And you know you ain't have it. So the first thing the devil say, when the phone went, well, you better lie and say, I am. Or someone knock on the door to each other, tell them I am. But you think it's you? No. The Spirit speak to you. Because what he wants you to do now is to come into agreement. So that now he can destroy you. Then our minds are filled with small things. Satan keeps us busy. The thoughts that come to your mind. The negative thoughts of God because of the pressures of life, because of the small things in life. A lot of times we're sitting in church and our mind, our mind on the job, our mind, we'll be going to become a young. It ain't you. So you're trying to keep knowledge away from you. So you keep us busy with small things. Satan, devils, speaks to us day and night. When you ain't dreaming, why you see it? The minute you open up your eye, the mind runs out of foolishness. It runs everywhere except on God. It runs all the things you have to do. Or run on something dead crazy. So, Satan is always on the job, trying to cause us to be distracted trying to keep us tied up, trying to keep us busy. When the devil tried to tempt Jesus, Jesus knew far more than Satan. He didn't yield to that temptation. He didn't yield when Satan say, if you be the son of God. He didn't take the bait. Command these stones to be made bread. He didn't take the bait. Jesus knew who he was. He knew that he was the son of God. So he had nothing to prove to Satan. These temptations came after 40 day fast. Satan again tell him that he would give him power if he would bow to him. Again, Jesus didn't take the bait. When Satan come to us, speaking, and we think it's us, a lot of time when Satan comes, he comes with the statements that start with I. I, to make you think it's you. Your spirit mind, 
your soul and your flesh is three. And they have to be alive all the time. If we let our minds, which is our soul, run with every thought we have, we'll never have time for God. We have to listen to the spirit mind. You know, there's a devil, there's an angel. And they always speak in. Then there's us. The three voices going on all the time. Our own, the devil own, and God's angel. It's a spirit world. And we have to know which voice is speaking. We have to know how to shut Satan down. We have to learn our enemy. Jesus knew how to answer Satan. Jesus knew that it, you know, it don't make sense answering him. Don't make sense coming against him with just words and Start cussing. That ain't gonna work. The only way you could shut down Satan, the devil voice, the evil voices speaking to you, is to do what Jesus did. So we in Luke. Let's go to Luke 4 and verse 4. 4 and verse 4. Ready, read. And Jesus answered, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. All right, turn over to verse 8. Verse 8, same, cha um, same chapter 4. Ready, read. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. All right, drop down to 12. Ready, read. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So, how do you stop Satan? By speaking the word of God. Jesus didn't waste time playing games with Satan. I should have slapped him down for talking to me like that. Yeah, boy, you should have slapped him down. So now you're coming in agreement with Satan. Uh, why you stop? So you got to walk in. Why you stop? See that rock that's over here? With the word of God. The first thing you should have said, Thou shalt love the God thy God, and all thy heart, and all thy heart, and all thy soul. Thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. That's what the answer should have been instead of going to agreement with Satan. Lord, bless him. Whatever it is going around in his life, Father God, what do you want me to say? You say I must pray for those that despitefully use me. You tell me I must resist the devil. See, Jesus resists Satan. But he fought Satan with the word of God. He said, it is written. Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. It is said. All Jesus did was give Satan the word when Satan was talking to him in his mind. When he brought the temptation. He gave him the word. Satan keep us so busy with the little small things, what we call life, that it takes and pulls us away from fellowship with God. The time when we should be spending with God, we either on the job putting it over time, or we can't find what we're looking for, or we got sidetracked going home and we stopped by one of our friends because that voice said, man, you ain't here Mary in such a long time. Why don't you go see Mary up to? And you and Mary sit down for three hours gossiping, running your mouth. You say you're catching up. And you didn't talk about all your friends, you didn't talk about all your family, and you didn't gossip about everybody. But you're catching up. These are the distractions 
to open doorways that we bring on ourselves. These are the little things that say to Jesus today. You get up a little bit early. Um, instead of spending your time wisely, we use that time when we go fish on fish fry or we go anywhere except spending that time in fellowship with God. And God frees up time with us. Satan speaks to us so that we can now waste that time doing anything other than fellowship with God. So a lot of times we spend wasting on the little things that God has already taken care of us for us. It is written, get it behind me, say for it is written, it is said, Jesus quoted the word because the word was in him. If Satan come up against you and you don't know that it's Satan, then, and you think it's just you, then one, Satan is destroying you. Because one, you don't even know Satan speaking to you. And then he come up with these little ideas and bad investments. And we take our money and we run it and put it in little schemes and trying to get rich quick. And we thinking about how I can multiply this money so I can do X, Y, Z. Why? Because you don't trust in God. Say to keep us busy. The word of God says that we are to meditate day and night. Turn to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Everybody there? We're going to start at verse 2. Actually, we can start from 1 so you can get the sense of it. So we're going to go from 1 down to, actually, 1 and 2. Psalms 1, verse, verses 1 and 2. Everybody there? Ready? Read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the of God, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And the law number verse two, one more time. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And day and night. It says, in this law he meditates day and night. That's the command. Our God is a big God. Our God say he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. That means that all of the little things that Satan have us busy with, God has already given to us. So we don't have to spend most of our time, every single day, trying to fix it, trying to make it work, carrying a load and carrying a heavy load, because the harder we work, the further away it looks like uh, the uh, goal pushes away from us. Every time we make two steps, we go back four. The harder we try, it's like the less we get accomplished. Why? Because if we're not doing it God's way, then we can't be looking for it to be successful. We'll be struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. Being kept away from our God in fellowship with him, out of his word, because we're so busy with the small things. The big picture is to serve God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That's a command. We do well to keep it. Jesus had the word of God in his heart. He was in the wilderness. He didn't have this King James Version with him. He had this. He had 
the word in his heart. Whatever's in a man comes out. We can't allow Satan to continue to speak to us day and night with the small things and causing us to believe that it's really us speaking to us. It's not us speaking to us, but our situations. If we trust God in our situations, then we don't have to be pondering about the day and night. If we do it God's way, then success and prosperity is guaranteed to us. There's no need for us to be one enough to do different things. There's no need. If we follow God's words, if we keep his commands and his laws, then we are guaranteed success. Busyness ends in nothing other than being tired. Busyness ends in nothing other than being tired. The money that you make is gone within the week. There are a lot of people that work many, many years and able to put up a nest egg. And if they ain't doing the right way, a lot of time, they lose that money at the end of their life. Most of the time, giving it to the doctors because they spend all their youth running after the money, doing it the wrong way, break down their bodies and spend the same money they work hard for, giving it to the doctors. Or they work so hard that they forget to live get to live. Could you say that you're genuinely happy? Could you say that you're genuinely happy? And when I say happy, I'm talking about the happiness that Christ talks about. Well, because the blessings of the Lord will publish in our soul. When we sit down and think about our future, we think about tomorrow. Does it make us happy? You truly say, God, I'm, I'm at peace, I'm happy. I am grateful. Where am I right now? A lot of people can't say that. Because truly, a lot of the Christians are happy. A lot of Christians are happy. You got more sinners, so they're more, far more happy than men and women of Christ. And they're sad. Because a lot of us got saved, but we never came out of the world. We still doing the things of the world. And we're robbing God big time. We are to learn the word of God. We are to meditate day and night. The reason why we have to meditate day and night is because when Satan come up against us, then we need to know who he is, how he comes, and how to deal with him, how to deal with his devils, how to shut him down how to excel in life, how to advance in life, how to please God, how to serve God, how to worship Him, who He is to us, what He means to us. If our minds are constantly on our situations, on our children, that are not our children, then God will first place God. If our minds are constantly on our work, then we have to find out where our heart is. Where is our heart? Is it with God? Is it in the world? Is it constantly thinking on, on, on the line of Satan, busyness? Where is your heart? What do you care about the most? What runs through your mind all day, every day? How often do you sit down with your friend Jesus and speak to him? Speak to him as a friend. Speak to him. How often do you get that quiet time to commune with God? A fellowship with him. We spend more time with the devil as children of God because we listen to him far more than we listen to God. Far more. 
getting the church for some people is a struggle. Why? Because Satan wants to keep them out, so he constantly busy them. He is cause situations to come up and you have to choose. Some people have to choose, well, if I go in the church or I go in this way. A lot of time, we think about Satan far too, too, more, too often throughout the day. You ever know when you decide you're going to read your Bible and spend time with God, everything go wrong? You ever notice when you don't go to church and God break down, something go wrong? Why? Because Satan knows once you learn who your father is and you learn the power that he's already given to you, the power over him, if he know you could, you know what you possess, if he know, we have to be educated like Satan. Satan ain't dumb. A lot of people think Satan dumb and stupid. Satan ain't dumb and he definitely ain't stupid. He ain't dumb and he ain't stupid. Let's go back to Luke. Going back to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 10. We will read verse 10 and verse 11. Everybody there? Ready? Read. Um, charge over thee to keep thee and his hand shall least thy foot up. And 13, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Okay. Now 10 says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Who did they talk in? Say that. Satan giving Jesus back the word. Satan gave Jesus back the word. Jesus was the only one who the word. Satan was called the same Bible. Satan. So when you take it, you talk him. He you talk him. What negative? And then he can put scripture on it. You better know Satan is madder than you. Because Satan gave Jesus Psalm 21. <laughs> Satan. And he quoted verbatim. He quoted word for word. He missed a word. He missed a word. This law, you know why Satan used to be? Do you know why he didn't know what? Because he needs to know. Satan needs to know his word. Just so we need to know it. So that when we break it, he go to God. And use it against us. So when Satan now start to tempt us and bring all kind of thoughts in our mind to cause us to sin, he now go to God and say, the Lord is ready. <laughs> He used it again for his children. So he busy keeping us busy with the small things so he can destroy us with the word of God when we should have this in our heart so that we know when he's coming up against us. My people prepared for lack of knowledge. Turn to Joshua. Actually, let's go back to Psalm 1. Let's go back to Psalm 1. And we're going to read verse 3. Psalm, Psalm 1, verse 3. Everybody there? Ready? Read. And he shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water that beareth forth its fruit in its season, and so not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. One more time. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that beareth forth fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now this is the man that keeps the law of God and meditate on the law of God day and night. Day and night. By him studying and meditating on the word of the Lord, it says, he would be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That means he had to wait for nobody to water him. He watered himself. And he would break forth fruit in the season. And leaf will not wither. But on top of that, whatsoever he do, it shall prosper. It's a promise. So, when Satan keeps us busy, that we forget to commune with God, get God's word, study the word, fellowship with God, meditate, think on it, think on it, think on it, dissect it, put it apart, fire the truth upon it. When we don't do this, then we are breaking the command. It's a command. It's a command. When we do this, when we do this, we automatically prosper. Automatically prosper. But we have to do it. We have to do it. When we keep God's laws by meditating on His word day and night, we don't have to worry about if our children will go to college. We don't have to worry about if our business will prosper. We don't have to worry about getting sick. We don't have to worry about the small things. It's taken care of. When you fill your heart with the word of God, you meditate day and night. You grow, grow, grow. So the more you grow, the more this word is in you, so that when situations come up against you, you now use the word of God to come up against sin who's coming up against you. But if you don't know the word of God, how are you going to come up against Satan? How you know Satan is attacking you if you don't know the word of God? So, success, prosperity is a promise to us when we do God's commands. It's a promise. We don't have to worry about small things with Satan keep us busy with. We don't have to worry about the small things at all. Turn to Joshua. One. Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 Joshua chapter 1 we will read verse 8 Joshua 1 verse 8 Everybody there? Ready? Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate within day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. One more time. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, 
but thou shalt meditate day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success again. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Another promise. So, the more we pick this up, this is the law. The more we pick this up and we study this and we meditate, think on it, the more we put this in our heart, what we are doing is that we are learning God's plan for our life. That's what we're doing. We're learning how to fight the animals and how to win the world. We are educating ourselves against the kingdom of darkness. We are educating ourselves about the power that we have in Christ Jesus. We are learning about the love of our Father that is mind-blowing. When we pick this up, uh, we open this. It's a joy to God. Because now we see his children seeking him, wanting him, obeying his commands. And when you obey, God not have a blessing. Because it's in the word. When we do what God make, success is guaranteed. But we have to open this up. It's for us to get, to get it, to get this. When we get this, we get power. When we get this, we get wisdom. We get understanding, we get revelation. We now have the victory over Satan that God gave us in Christ Jesus. But when we don't use this, we don't exercise, then we get beat up all day, every day with Satan. And we think we're living life. But all he's doing is pulling us down. He's destroying us because of lack of knowledge. Whatsoever we do shall prosper. That means you don't have to run after prosperity. You don't have to run after money. You just have to meditate in the way, day and night. Put it in your heart. That's all, we, that's, all, that's all it said we have to do. It didn't say, go sow a seed for healing. Go sow a seed for your business. He said, I'm not. He said, a lot of us want quick fixes. It ain't nothing quick about this. It ain't nothing quick about this. If your mind is consumed, with the cares of this world more than this, then we ain't getting it yet. There was a time when I might have been saved about seven years. I can't say I'm not even gonna try and see how much years. But when I start to learn about the battlefield and the battlefield being your mind. It was over the top. Because first of all, how you feel? You're talking about you had a battle. Not knowing that you are a fight. So to try to now put down every thought like how the word God said. Cast down every thought or every imagination that is all except God knows your God. Every time that thoughts come, you want to pull them down because they want your thoughts. Understand? Yes. So whenever Satan comes with negative words and bad things running through your mind, you have to put it down. And let me tell you something. When I first started to do it, my mind was tired. 
tired. It was literally tired because every time you go to the left, you like pull it back to the right. And this is like all day just trying to stay focused on the right things. But you have to start somewhere. Don't let all of your waking time be on Facebook, TV, games, children, home, work, play. No, no, no. These are the little things that say people's respect. There's a place and time for all of that, yes. But not all day, every day. Where is the time to meditate? Day. Where is the time to meditate? Night. We have to carve out the time. Make the time. Get in the word. Get in the word. See this here? Yes, this is great to have. But this? It will destroy you. Too much information. Too much things to do. Every time you turn and you go on, you go on something. A game. A new app. I didn't even know what app was. You didn't know what app was. I knew this. <laughs> I knew that. It is just too much information. It keeps you too busy. If you have no self-control. And it have people too busy, too busy for yourself, too busy to sit down, sit down and think, because you're constantly going, 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 going. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got a friend, um, driving with that friend for several days. I don't have to turn on radio in the car. I don't need no entertainment in the car. But let me tell you something, you get in the car and the radio on. It's time. I say, oh, this is my car. I catch it right. So let me just not say that. And this went on for days and we made something. You get inside the house and TV on. On the iPad, on the TV on, and then the phone on the side of the iPad, on the TV on, and no time, no time was there a quiet time other than when they went to sleep. And guess what? The TV is still on. I was like, oh, God, this time you're driving me nuts. I used to have all the noise, you know, I used to. Why is this? And I look at that, and I say, all Satan plan is to keep him so busy. I really need to take time to take for myself or take a look One time I was like, like, maybe it's about a weekend, I said, turn off the tail, turn it off, I don't have no more. I couldn't take no more radio. But in all the driving, he said, I have to have the radio on. But you see how Satan tie you right now to where you even have time to think. Something always going on, going on. So when, what's meditation? When do you meditate? When I started to read and, and um, study the word of God, I got excited about it. <coughs> got excited about it. And every time, I couldn't wait to get home from work just so I could get in the word. Help you lay home, work, finish you lay bed, you lay put it to sleep, and I then I turn up the light and I lay it on. Sometimes I don't hold it on because I won't read them and I don't want a distraction. So I don't hold it on until she goes to sleep. And when she goes to sleep, then I turn on the light and that was me in God time. And let me tell you something, one day, when I voice hear God speak to me, he said to me, come and talk with me. And let me tell you something, he's been talking ever since. But it didn't come just when I got saved. It didn't even come after he had got saved. It didn't even come five years after I got saved. You know what I mean? It, got, it came when I got excited. It came when I was like, okay, now I need more. And I was like, 
when I couldn't wait to be able to get in this because where I left off it was so good I couldn't wait to get back in I didn't hear God's voice until I got excited about his word and like I say he haven't stopped speaking so have you heard God's voice yet? have you heard him say come and talk with me? if you're having a conversation with God he answered right away I can have a conversation with God and talk and he answers right away. That happened to you? Well, you have to wait days and days and weeks to hear an answer. See, it's fellowship. It's friendship. I remember when God called me friend. Let me tell you something. The tears went down my eyes. I said, God, oh, thank you. I remember when I lost my best friend. So I have to hurt God to know that I had an ugly best friend. And I had even more of my best friend. And I said, oh God, I am so sorry. Let me tell you something. We are made in the image of God. He wants to lavish us with blessings, with the things that make us happy. He don't want us to spend every vacant minute and second of the day trying to fix it by ourselves. That's why he said we have to trust in him. <clears throat> and we not our own understanding. In all our ways of knowledge and he will direct our path. So we have to let him be God and let us be his child. We have to literally take this for what it is. Our Lord that teaches us about God and teaches us about Satan. We have to literally open this up day and night. It's okay if you're tired. Sometimes I wake up my eye burning and I say, like, God, wake me up, but when you wake me up, let me not be sleepy. And sometimes this is like the three hours sleep. And let me tell you something, when I wake up, why do wake? But we have to pray it. We have to want it. We have to desire it. It's the only way. So how are we who are God? The fellowship. The friendship. He wants only one. Is us. Turn to John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verse 13 and 14 John 15 verse 13 and 14 Everybody there? Yes. Ready, read. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. One more time. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. Now who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus says that you are his friend. He laid down his life for his friend. Is Jesus your friend? He was Jesus' friend. Let's read 15. Henceforth. I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you.
So all things Jesus said that he had heard of our Father, which is his Father, he had made known to us. How will he made known to us? It's right here. It's all we need. It's all the bread we need. It's all the food we need. It's all the drink we need. We are Jesus' friend. If we let him, he's for sure our friend. He laid down his life for us. He ain't called us servants. Call us friend. Take, ask God to take the limits off of your mind. Let us stop thinking on that small scale. If you compare small with small, you can only achieve small, you'll see small, be small, see small, live small, think small. Small is small. You serve a great God. You serve a mighty God. You serve a God that knows everything. And we are joined heirs with Christ. Therefore, we many a unit. See your business, your career. Your life, your ministry, the same size as the world. And we will do great works for God. But we have to start thinking the way Christ thinks. Have to. It's too small. It's too small. Let's put all of our cares on Jesus. And let's find time. To keep the commandment because we are Jesus' friend. He said you are his friend if you keep his command. What's that? Meditate day and night. Shut Satan down. Shut him down. To know his voice, you have to know Jesus' voice and you have to know yours. You have to know the difference between the three. You need to know when it's your thought. You need to know when it's Satan. And you need to know when God's speaking. And you know when you need to spend time with God. Hey, this God's been over The Satan will speak. And you think that now, uh, he gave you one by accident. And he set you up failure. So you need to know the difference. And that comes by spending time with the Lord God. Spending time with God. Meditating on his word day and night. Learning of him. Depending on him, trusting him. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, let us not forget it. Give us, Father God, ideas and strategies on how to shut down Satan way before he starts to speak to us in the name of Jesus. Give us the strength to endure, Father God, the testings. Teach us, Father God, your word. Give us the strength, Father God, to meditate on your word day and night, Father God, that we fall in love with it, Father God, because your word is you. Let us fall in love with it, Father God. Let us trust your word, Father God. Let us trust you, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we need you, and we thank you, Father God, for truly being our friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's now we have...